I want to do a short video on the uh, entertainment screens in the rear. So this is real quick, but if you've never used one before, um, this, will, this will be painless. All right, so starting with the ones in the middle. These middle placed in the roof TV screens work the same way. There's gonna be a remote control mounted up here so you can do everything via remote. You can switch between your screens. Um, you want an HDMI plug-in, you can run it from here. That's an HDMI plug-in there. Otherwise, it's gonna go in the DVD that's in the dash right there where that little Cadillac symbol is. Okay, and both screens show the same content, the ones that are mounted on the roof. Okay, it's really simple. You push this button, the screen pops down and you just pull it the rest of the way down. Um, put your DVD in and it will automatically play. It is a Blu-ray capable, so you can run any, any DVD disc in there. Um, and then you just use a remote control like you do at home to run a DVD player. It's that simple. So we'll close this one up and we'll move on to the dual TV screens in the rear headrests. And as I mentioned on the general review, you're going to put your DVD in up here and then your physical controls are right here. Now it does tell you on the screen, uh, you won't see it right now I don't think, but uh, well, yeah you can. We'll hit the power button on it again. Hopefully it'll pop up here. Yep. It actually tells you what channel on your headphones to select to listen to this TV screen or that TV screen. So then this one up here is going to be like a channel one or two, as well as the one in the rear. So all three of these can be operating together. Okay, you can plug in a standard uh, video and audio input off of uh, another, like a portable DVD player if you want, or uh, a Game Boy or something that you want to plug in and use up here. Um, you do have a source button up here to select between the different sources. You can, apparently, you can watch put a DVD in this one and watch the same DVD on that one. So you can select the opposite monitor and the headrest and you can both watch the same DVDs. Hey, you do have a USB plug-in. If you have uh, media files, MP4s, that kind of stuff, you can plug them in and play them from here. You do have a physical input jack for your headphone if you want, although it's designed to run wirelessly. And then you can tilt this to any angle you want. So again, pop the DVD in, use this to select your source. You can hit the power button if it's not already on. And then you have play, stop, and eject. If you're not using one of the wireless headphones, you can plug in here. And if you want to attach something like a gaming system, you can do so right here. All right, I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching. All right, so if you click on this video, looking for a little more in depth into the infotainment system. So here we go. Okay, so uh, you can always tell by the bottom of the screen how many little dots you have as to how many screens of icons you have. So if I just, I have two. So if I swipe once, then I have my other page of, of icons. If I swipe again, it's just gonna go back to the first page. So let's talk about the basic icons that you have. And to access these, they're all just a touch and then they'll come on your screen. So if I want audio, I touch audio, okay? And then of course I have radio, other media sources. Is it a CD, is it an iPhone, an iPod, whatever, okay? You have all these different things down here, okay? Um, up here, you're always gonna have a shortcut of menus if you, in case you wanna jump to something else, like, ooh, I need to adjust the climate, okay? A simple push up there, whoops, that was, I hit the wrong button here. A simple push up here gives you your climate controls. Okay, so now I can adjust and say, well, I want this back to 70. Here's where you turn sync on. And if sync is on, then your driver and passenger temperature settings remain the same. Okay? And the minute the passenger touches there, heated or cooled, sync is turned off. Okay? Uh, so let's. these are your shortcuts up here. So let's get back to where we were for a minute. 
All right, so I'm in audio. So in the radio, if you want to tune it manually, you can use these buttons here to tune back and forth. You can also press tune and actually type in the radio station. The numbers will automatically light up when you get to a, a number, like if I want to do 88.5. So I do 88.5. Okay. Now, th that radio station is now showing up right here, okay, and I can go exit, and I'm on 88.5. So, direct tune, just going up or down a couple uh, buttons here, going up or down a couple of stations here. If I want to select a different type of media, I click here. There is nothing available at this point, so I don't have anything. Let's just go back out of here for a minute. Okay, and then finally over here I have a menu button. And if I click that, I can set a lot of different uh, settings here for like the tones. So there's, there's where you get your bass and your mid-range and your treble. Um, you do have, um, you can adjust sound for the driver. You can adjust it for the rear. You've got your balance and everything right here. All right, so let's go back. That's go to the radio. Let's go back over here. Um, I don't have my phone hooked up, so but this is where you go in to adjust your phone settings and pair it. You hit pair, typically it comes up with a code on your phone, you type the code in, click OK, and it pairs. Okay, I'll show you Apple CarPlay in a little bit here, um, and there, that you directly connect down below here to the USB ports, and it, it will sync for you. So I'm going to go back to home. Um, you've got uh, navigation right here, so built-in navigation if you want. Okay, again, you have got down here, you've got a zoom in, zoom out button. Zoom out, is not sh zoom in is not showing. You can set your destination by clicking on here, address, intersection, points of interest, so on. Same back button as before. You can go to a menu. Now you can set some things in the menu for your navigation system. Remember before this was the radio? Now that we're in navigation, it shows you only navigation things. What's nice about having this little seek button right here is that you your radio station is showing up. So even though you're in the nav screen, you can still scroll through radio stations. Now we'll go back to the home button again. And if I go into settings, you have your time and date, rear seat reminder, language, video voiceover. Um, let's try that out. Okay, so that should give me a voiceover when I'm looking at different things on the menu. So we'll leave that on and see what points up. You have a valet mode, you've got a teen driver, um, you've got information about your vehicle, which we'll take a look at. Climate and air quality, so uh, auto fan speed, what do you want that to be? You can even set the how much the auto fan speed works at, how fast it goes. Auto cooled seats, on or off. So you can turn lots of little things on or off and adjust right in here. Okay, we'll go back one more step. You got collision detection systems. So here you got forward collision, rear cross traffic, adaptive cruise control, go notifier, lane change alert, and any one of these works the same way. You click on it and you have an on or off. Sometimes you have more options, but they'll show up here. So I'm gonna go all the way back here, okay? And we're gonna go back to home, actually. You got your climate control, okay? Here you have the mode settings, here you have your temperature settings, whether you're doing the rear or the front, and uh, your fan speed. Yeah. So I'll go back to home again. And then um, weather is weather. You can look at the location, you can look at it based on a map. Okay, it'll actually show you a radar, which is really cool. All right, so hang on. And then over here, you've got a five-day uh, forecast and then an hourly forecast. Okay. okay, we'll go back to home. And uh, over here in the video button is where you adjust uh, anything for the rear media that's playing. Okay. Again, you have some settings underneath menu. I'll go back here. All right, let's go to the next screen. Okay, you can set up your SMS texting in here, your OnStar. You have, do have a separate button for rear climate if you really want to get, uh, but, but that's also accessible just right through here. 
So it's kind of like a redundant button, but um, it is nice. You can set them, you know, everything from here. Okay, we'll go back to home for a minute. Cameras. You can uh, look at your different cameras that are on. And you can turn the guidelines on or off. That's your rear camera. That's your front mounted camera, which is really cool. Love a front mounted camera. Uh, I can go back to home a minute. You can uh, do traffic. Take a look at what's on your, you know, it'll, depending on where you're driving, it'll tell you what's ahead of you. All right, go back to home. Um, we've already talked about this one. Uh, apps, you can download certain apps right to here. Um, you will want to consult your owner's manual to see what those are. All right, for now, I'm just going to press home. All right, and the last thing I'll point out is right down here are your presets for your radio. So if you click on this at any time, um, you can preset your radio. Right now it just says like 1, 2, and then here I programmed in 92.7. Okay, now you have number 4, number 5. But if you just, if you go to audio, you select the radio station that you want to listen to. I'm just going to do, I don't know if that's even a radio station. All you got to do is press and hold. Okay, and now that's set. So what it does is your presets. So anywhere you click, you can see that icon, then you can your presets show up right away, which is nice. All right, so we want to talk a little bit about the heads-up display and the digital rearview mirror. And uh, on the Escalade, they've made the digital rearview mirror very simple. There's one button. So if you push this, it's a regular rearview mirror. And if you pull it, it feeds off the cameras in the rear of the vehicle. It's that simple. All right, so next let's take a look at the heads-up display. So the heads-up display is right up here. There's your information button to click between the different settings on the screen. It'll affect what you see. And here is the brightness or the dimness. So I'm gonna go up here and let's see if we can see the heads up display. Okay. Let's see what we get here. We'll go through the different modes here. Okay. All right, so if you clicked on this video, you're looking for a little more information on controlling the driver's information system uh, and, and what all does that do. So we're, this is on the 2019 Cadillac Escalade, but would be similar to other uh, uh, newer Cadillacs. In all right, so basically on this side, you've got a couple of things. First of all, you have cruise control on, cruise control off, then you can hit up uh, to resume you can go down, uh, you go down to set it, and then you can raise or lower your cruise speed by clicking through these as well, up or down. Down here you've got a phone button. Over here you've got a heated steering wheel turning on and off. Over here you've got your voice, um, your voice command button. Over here you have got your um, gap, your gap adjust for your cruise control. So how far you want to be behind somebody when you're um, automatically adjusting cruise control is on. All right, so that's the left side. Over on the right side, you have um, this button here that clicks and goes up or down, and then you have a left arrow, a right arrow, excuse me, and a left arrow. So using the left arrow, you watch what happens in the screen. There's three clusters, right, center, and left. So if I move over, I'm now in the center cluster, and if I move over again, I'm on the left cluster. If I click again, I'm back to the right cluster. So I can use my right and left arrows to go between the three windows. Once I'm in the three windows, I can use this toggle button up or down to go through the different menus, and I can also push it to select something. So here I am in the right cluster. I'm on, let me see if I can focus this a little better. Okay, right now I'm on my phone. If I click that little toggle button up, I'm going to go to a compass. If I go up again, I'm going to go to my audio stuff. And if I go again, I got it. You just saw the needles extend down there, so you just have more of a normal looking dashboard, like an analog one. And if I click again, I get back to some options. Um, and then if I click again, I'm back to phone. So I'm going to go backwards one. You see the little menu button down here at the bottom? If I click this, just push it in, 
that will select a menu. Okay, so you can scroll through all the different options, okay, and then click center to do the center click here, and then you can click again to adjust something, and you can toggle it up or down to set your speed warning. Okay, so I'm just gonna say uh, we're gonna push and hold select to turn it off. There we go. Now, if I go to my center information system right here, and again, I do that just by clicking this left arrow right here. Okay, now I can do the up and down toggle and I can change, I got speed limit signs are showing up as well as my digital speed. I can have just uh, an analog looking speedometer with a little longer dial. And then I'm back to this. Okay, if I go left one more time, now I'm over here on my oil life, and if I toggle up or down, I can see fuel range, compass, uh, the trip meters, a little longer needle again, engine hours, battery voltage, uh, displaying your gaps here, tire pressure, and then back to oil life. So these two buttons can act as two different things. They can act as like your favorite settings, like your favorite radio stations and stuff, or they can be a seek or fast forward buttons. So if I go up here in my main menu under systems and click, I can make it primarily a favorites button or a seek button. Okay, and then again, I just press the left arrow to go back. So there you go, there's a basic overview of what you can get in your driver's information center. Um, one thing that's kind of fun is you change the display layout here. Oops, I can go to enhanced, and then here's what happens. You get a little different view. All right. Now I'm gonna go back to uh, balanced. Oops. Now, now you see your menu showing up in your center of your screen instead of over on the far left. Okay, so really a lot of customization here. But again, it's all controlled the same way through these buttons right here. And then finally on the stereo, you have your volume up and down buttons for your stereo.